Before the founding of the United States, the colonies were busy establishing communities, planting the seeds of urbanism, which would eventually shape many of the cities we know today. And as the populations in our cities grew, so did the demand for housing and office space. This led to many of the original settlements in booming areas being demolished to clear the way for high-rises, but not all was lost. Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to this house. In the heart of Philadelphia, Elfrith's Alley was spared the wrecking ball. This neighborhood, consisting of 32 houses, dates back to 1703, a time when immigrants were arriving by boat, seeking opportunity and a better life in the new world. As the neighborhood was built up, it developed a distinctive style of federal and Georgian homes, as well as a new type of home known as a Trinity House. The Trinity-style house got its name from its distinct layout, offering three rooms spread across three floors. These tall, thin houses were planned to be only 14 feet wide, with about 300 square feet per level. This made for a tight living situation in a densely populated neighborhood. The occupants of these houses, all coming from different cultures, created a true American melting pot. Walking down the street, you could have heard a dozen different languages being spoken amongst the families that lived there. Jobs range from glass blowing to furniture building to metalsmiths, all hardworking people bringing their talents and skills from their homeland to make their newly found community better. As the centuries passed and cities grew around the U.S., many of the original families moved on. By 1900, nearly 200 years after the houses had been built, the brick homes were viewed as outdated. The area around Elfrith's Alley had been replaced with factories offering low-paying jobs, bringing down the property values of the street. With new industry encroaching on a once thriving community, the neighborhood saw a shift in its demographics. Instead of housing dozens of cultures, it became predominantly occupied by the Irish immigrants who worked the nearby factories, and Elfrith's Alley was renamed to Cherry Street. At the time, there was a strong public sentiment against Irish immigrants, which drove down the property values even further, to the point that it became more economical for a developer to purchase the entire neighborhood and demolish it to build a new factory instead of building on an empty lot a little further away. Thankfully, though, this was not allowed to happen. Residents refused to sell their homes, and when developers threatened to evict them through eminent domain, the Elfrith's Alley Association was formed to preserve the historic neighborhood and restore the name of the street to Elfrith's Alley. In present day, the neighborhood has been fully restored, offering a glimpse into the often overlooked history of working class Americans in the buildings they called home. Long gone are the days of plummeting property values as the smallest Trinity house, being around 900 square feet, comes with a price tag in excess of $1 million. Having been continuously occupied for over 320 years, Elfrith's Alley is the oldest continually occupied residential street in the United States. While these homes are not house museums, every year in June, the neighborhood celebrates its heritage with a street festival where several of the homeowners open their doors to the public. What do you think? Could you live in America's oldest neighborhood? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. And while you're there, Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.